Good afternoon, everyone. It is now 2 p.m. Eastern, so we will begin this meeting of the North American Numbering Council. My name is Christy Schumann. I am the designated federal officer of the Nancy, and I thank you all for joining us today for our second meeting of 2022. Before we begin, I'd like to thank all the commission staff who help us with the Nancy meetings, including the commission meeting room staff who have helped us keep the all virtual Nancy meetings up and running for the last two years. Chairwoman Charles Peterson, I now turn the meeting over to you. Thank you, Christy. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the second meeting of the Nancy for 2022. We look forward to hearing from our two working groups today, and we'd like to recognize them for all of the heavy lifting they've been doing. The Numbering Administration Oversight Working Group will be presenting several items, including annual reports to the council and one report and recommendation to assist the commission in an upcoming procurement. The call authentication trust anchor working group will be presenting the third and final report and recommendation under the commission's referral issued last June. Both groups have been working diligently to get it all done and I would be remiss if I didn't thank them for their efforts. Next, we welcome members of the public watching via live stream and encourage you to submit any questions to livequestions at FCC.gov. I'll say that one more time, livequestions at FCC.gov. Your questions will be read during the public participation portion of the meeting. Before we begin, I will review for council members some ground rules and best practices to ensure we have a smooth and successful meeting. First, please keep your microphone muted unless you are speaking. Second, you may use the video function, but it is not required. Third, if you have a question or would like to make a comment during designated discussion times, please use the raise hand feature. Both Christy and I will monitor this. Everyone manages their own raise hand feature, so please unclick once no longer needed. When you are speaking, please identify yourself as we may not recognize your voice. And please remember to use mute when you are finished speaking. Finally, does anyone have any questions before we proceed? I am now pleased to welcome Trent Hark Rader, Chief of the Wireline Competition Bureau at the FCC to make opening remarks. Trent, if I uh, uh, didn't pronounce your last name correctly, please forgive me, um, but I'm going to hand the mic over to you at the moment. You did it perfectly. It is a mouthful. I, I can see that. I've been wrestling with it myself my whole life. So good afternoon, Chairwoman Charles Peterson and Vice Chairwoman Alexander White and all the members of the Nancy and welcome to everyone who is watching this meeting online. This is my first opportunity to address the Nancy and I introduce myself as the new chief of the Wireline Competition Bureau. During my career at the commission, including 10 years in the bureau, I've learned how vital Nancy's technical expertise and insights are to the Commission. While the use of telephone numbers has expanded during the past 25 years of the Nancy, one thing remains the same. Numbering resources are an essential way Americans stay connected. Americans must have safe and ready access to communications they can rely upon, and the Nancy plays an important role in ensuring these connections. I really look forward to working with you on these vital issues going forward. I'd also like to personally welcome the new members who recently joined the Nancy and the Numbering Administration Oversight Working Group. Those are Chris Frischella, Tracy Nayer, David McCoy, Terry Blake, Bob McCausland, and Lara Hollywald. Thank you all for your willingness to be part of Nancy's important work. And now to the heart of the matter. Combating unlawful robocalls and malicious caller ID spoofing is a top consumer protection priority. Actually, it's a top priority full stop at the commission and something I hear about every day from the chairwoman. 
The Nancy's Call Authentication Trust Anchor Working Group has long played a key role in the Commission's work on caller ID authentication technology and the Stir Shaken framework. Earlier this year, the Nancy voted on a report and recommendation from the CATA Working Group on a set of best practices for terminating voice service providers to follow to protect their customers using caller ID authentication information. And today, the Council will hear the third and final report from a series of charges issued to the CATA Working Group in June of last year. Today's report concerns the adoption of caller ID authentication technology and other techniques to combat robocalls by policymakers and providers in countries outside the United States. I particularly want to recognize the CATA leadership, specifically Jackie Walgamuth and Beth Shorose, as well as all the CATA members for their hard work and for sharing their expertise with the Commission. We appreciate your diligence in delivering timely and expert recommendations on these complex technical issues, and we appreciate your support of our efforts to stem the tide of illegal robocalls. Today, you will also hear reports and recommendations from the NAOWG on the annual evaluation of the billing and collection agent, revising and updating the billing and collection agent contract requirements, and recommendations for the North American numbering plan fund size and contribution factor. These critical administrative oversight roles of the NAOWG and Nancy are vital to ensuring that numbers are assigned and administered efficiently and impartially. Thank you to the leadership and members of the NAOWG for their hard work and expertise, not only in your continued oversight role, but also in the additional issue specific charges you are working on simultaneously. So this is just a brief preview of the, of the Council's work, and it doesn't really do justice to the time that you all have invested in providing timely and expert recommendations to the Commission. I'll say thank you again for your dedication and service, and turn the call back over to you, Chairwoman Charles Peterson. Thank you. Thank you, Trent. We appreciate you taking time to join us today, and I thank you for your kind remarks. I also want to say, Trent, that you stole my thunder. I'm pulling your legs um, because I also will be uh, welcoming new members to the Nancy. So um, my next comments may sound a bit repetitive, so I do want to apologize to members on the call this afternoon. But for uh, now for announcements, we've had a number of recent appointments, like I just said, to the council. So please join me in welcoming the following new members. Again, Mr. Chris Prashella represents EPIC, the Electronic Privacy Information Center. Ms. Tracy Nayer of the North Carolina Attorney General's Office has been appointed to represent the National Association of Attorney Generals. David McCoy of the General Office of the Arkansas Attorney General will serve as the alternate. And then Terry Blake will represent the West Virginia Public Service Commission. And Twilio has replaced its alternate representative, and Ms. Allison Blevins will now serve in that role. We appreciate all of you for sharing your time and expertise with us. We're excited to work with you and are here if you have any questions. So welcome. Now I'll turn the meeting back over to DFO Christy Schumann, who will conduct the roll call. If the members have any new ethic disclosures to make to the group, please respond when called with your name to indicate that you are present and then make the relevant disclosure at that time. Okay, we'll begin the roll call with 10X people. This is Lisa Marie Maxson, no disclosures. Thank you. 800 response information service. Eight hundred response information services. Never <laughs> 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 you. This is interesting. <laughs> okay, let's try that one again. Um, Eight hundred response information services. Okay, ACA Connect. Uh, Brian Hurley is here on behalf of ACA Connect. Thank you. 
Ad hoc communications users committee. Susan Gately's here for ad hoc. Hello. Thank you. Alliance for Telecommunications Industry Solutions, Addis. Hello, this is Jackie Waldrama. AT&T. Hello, if we see. No disclosure. Bandwidth. Greg Rogers is here for bandwidth, no disclosures. Charter. LJ Freeman with bandwidth, no disclosures. Okay, thank you. Charter Communications. Len Klepper with Charter Communications, no disclosures. Great, thank you. Comcast. Ash Charze is here for Comcast. I'll disclose that I'm at least temporarily serving on the board of the SGIGA. Okay, thank you. Competitive Carriers Association. CCA, Competitive Carriers Association. CTIA, the Wireless Association. Hello, this is Sarah Leggan for CTIA, and I have no disclosures. Thank you. Thank you. Electronic Privacy Information Center. Chris Frischella, no disclosures. Google. Do we have anyone for Google? Encompass. Chris Shipley representing Encompass, no disclosures. Intelliquent. Do we have anyone for Intelliquent? Lumen. This is Philip Lindsay with Lumen. I have no disclosures. Maine Public Utilities Commission. Bill Bartlett, Maine PUC. Thank you. National Association of Attorneys General. This is Tracy Nader with the North Carolina AG's office on behalf of NAG. Um, I have no disclosures and just quickly, thanks so much to Mr. Harkrader and Madam Chair Charles Peterson for the double welcome and to all the members of uh, for inviting NAG to this table on behalf of my colleague, Mr. McCoy and myself. We look forward to contributing to the important work of Nancy. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Um, National Association of State Utility Consumer Advocates, Nasuka. Yes, uh, Bob Nelson uh, with Nasuka, no disclosures. Nevada Public Utilities Commission. Hi, this is Tammy Cordova with the Nevada PUC. I have no disclosures. Thank you. NTCA, the Rural Broadband Association. This is uh, Brian Ford with NTCA, no disclosures. Thank you. Peerless Network. Do we have anyone for Peerless? Public Service Commission of District of Columbia. Hi, this is Lara Howley Wall from DCPSC, no disclosures. Thank you, SIP Forum. <coughs> this is Rich Shockey for the SIP Forum, no disclosures. Thank you. T-Mobile USA. <laughs> This, this is Scott Fargamuth. Uh, no disclosures. This is Rosemary Leist. Um, I disclose that I do not have an officer role on the NAPM LLC, but I do sit on the NAPM LLC. Okay, thank you. TDS Telecommunications. I'm a double with TDS. No disclosures. Telmix. This is Sarah Helko with Telmex, acting as an alternate for David Kasem. No disclosures. Thank you. Twilio. This is Allison Blevins with Twilio. No disclosures. Welcome, Allison. Thank you. Uh, U.S. Telecom. This is Josh Berkey with U.S. Telecom. No disclosures. Verizon. Anna Crandall, Verizon. No disclosures. Vonage. This is Colin Brown with Vonage. No disclosures. West Virginia Public Service Commission. This is Terry Blake with the West Virginia PSC. No disclosures. 
Hi, Connective. Chris Drake with iConnective, no disclosure. Kathy McMahon with iConnective, no disclosures. Somos. Joel Bernstein with Somos, no disclosures. Okay, did I miss anyone or did anyone join late? This is Rebecca Beaton with the Washington State Commission staff. Thank you. Um, that concludes our roll call. I turn the meeting back to the chairwoman. Thanks, Christy. For our first presentation, we will hear a review of the performance of the North American Numbering Plan Billing and Collection Agent from Bob McCausland, co-chair of the Numbering Administration Oversight Working Group. Bob, the call is yours. Thank you, Chairwoman. Charles Peterson and D.O. Schumann. Uh, I have a disclosure that I need to read. I had retired from Entrado Corporation in March. Hence, I no longer work for or am associated with Entrado. My NAOWG membership is now that of a special government employee, SGE for short, which is a voluntary position and does not involve any compensation or reimbursement. I've agreed to a 12-month recusal on any party-specific matters in which Entrado was a party, as well as on any fee issues that could impact Entrado. I have agreed to seek guidance as appropriate from the FCC Ethics Council. Um, uh, slide five, uh, as shown, Phil Lindsay is co-chair with me. He is the expert with a history. Uh, we are joined by FCC liaisons, Bill Anderley and Rebecca Macaroni, and supported by a really good team. Slide six, our mission, as many of you already know on the NAOWG, is to oversee activities and review performances of the North American Numbering Plan Administrator and the Billing and Collection Agent. Uh, we provide oversight of number, portability administration, and the reassigned numbers database administrator as well. Uh, contract oversight of uh, vendors uh, includes SOMOS for the NANPA and SOMOS also for the RNDA. Welch is the billing and collection agent. Some other information is shown here uh, to the extent uh, that uh, members would like to read the details. Uh, we provide oversight of number portability uh, slide seven, billing and collection agent performance review will be done by me. Uh, so long as connectivity sticks with me, it's been on and off. Uh, and Phil, I know you'll jump in if for some reason I were to get cut off here. Phil Lindsay will cover the uh, billing and collection uh, agent requirements as well as the budget and contribution factor following my presentation. Uh, slide eight, uh, we'll start this. Uh, performance review, move over to slide nine. Background, uh, NAOWG in terms of Welch LLC performance review, uh, reviewed uh, the evaluation consistent with the monthly de deliverable matrix. We evaluate Welch LLP performance monthly. And I am seeking connectivity. We can still hear you, Bob. OK, good. Uh, sorry about that. Um, performance rating schematic is based on MET and not MET. Uh, in terms of MET, MET performance requirements means uh, uh, that they're considered to be successful in their performance. Their performance was compliant, uh, competent, and reliable and decisions and recommendations were within requirements and expectations. Uh, the performance is measured on a number of key reporting uh, elements. They range from, and I'm not going to include everything, but I'm going to cite examples. Um, their uh, 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 responsiveness uh, to industry, uh, FCC reports uh, include cash balances, 
controls over the funds, processing of payments for customer service, various processes, uh, participation uh, for audits and uh, accounts receivable performance. Uh, we review and provide recommendations uh, and so forth. Uh, scheduled conference calls are performed uh, to gain industry consensus on rating and evaluation. Uh, these were achieved uh, without any outstanding issues or concerns. Moving over to slide 10. The NAOWG considered, reviewed, and analyzed the following data while compiling overall the evaluation. Monthly deliverables. Bob, did we lose you? Bob, did we lose you? Receivables, oh. NAOWG observations, co-chair and membership interactions with the vendor, contribution factor, and budget-related communications. Uh, can you still hear me? Yeah, you dropped out for a minute, but we can hear you now. Uh, I'll continue hoping that you can hear yep. me. Keep going. Welch LLP rating for 2021 was met, and it is the recommendation of the NOWG. Bob, I think we lost you again. Are you, Bob, are you, are you back on? Bob, are you back on? This is Phil. I can take over if you'd like. I think we're oh. coming to the end of the presentation yeah. here if you'd like. Yeah, Phil, if you could just finish it up, we'd appreciate it. Yep, absolutely. No problem. So the Welch LLP rating for the um, evaluation period of 2021 was met and it is the recommendation of the NAOWG that this uh, um, is the the met uh, um, rating is the recommendation of the NAOWG. Um, the following are the few items that uh, we define that this rating is defined on below, which is the met requirements in order to can be considered successful. I think Bob kind of touched on this at the beginning. The performance was competent and reliable. Decisions and recommendations were within the requirements and expectations. So um, I think the next slide then um, if there's any. Oh, and then these are the items that we evaluated and used to come up with our uh, rating for this um, performance re review period. Uh, this is fairly uh, standard as far as what we review on an annual basis. Uh, the continued collection uh, of committed funds based on reassigned numbers database, development of costs in addition to the funds that support the North American Numbering uh, Administration. Uh, Welch initiated the collection of reimbursement of funds and uh, successfully provided appropriate accounting for the R&D and the NAMPA funds and reporting the billing and collections into a monthly report. Uh, the compliance for red light rule, which is consistent with the FCC 0472. Uh, they're subject to multiple different audits and provided all necessary information for uh, successful and on time completion of those audits. Uh, Welch manages multiple banking accounts associated with the collections and distribution of funds associated with a NAMP and the R&D, including credit card payments, uh, fun functionality resulting in decreased delinquent payments and reduced application of the red light rule. Wells prepared a detailed operational review for 2021 and an easy to follow format without being prompted to deliver. So these are fairly standard um, and uh, we have a, a great relationship with uh, Welch as their uh, function as the BNC agent. I think the next, uh, I, I think I, we could open it up for questions before we go to the vote if anybody has any questions associated with that review. 
Well, Phil, I want to thank you and Bob for your presentation. Um, and would now like to open this item up for discussion. Do any members have questions about the billing and collection agency performance review? Hearing no questions, I will now open the meeting for a vote to approve this report. Would anyone like to make a motion to approve? Comcast will make a motion um, to approve. Team, say your name. Sorry. Can you say your name? Who moved? Oh, I'm sorry. Beth Shorze from Comcast will make a motion. Beth Shorze. So Beth Shorze from Comcast moved the motion. And who from Team Mobile? Second. Rosemary Leist, T-Mobile. Hey, Rose, hey, Rosemary. Rosemary Leist from T-Mobile second the motion. All in favor, say aye, please. Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. The Nancy approves this report of the NAOWG. Thank you, everyone. Next, we will hear a report and recommendation on the updated statement of work and billing and collection agent requirement presented by Phil Linz, co-chair of the NAOWG. Thank you, Chairwoman Charles Peterson. Um, before we get into the recommendations of the um, NAOWG on the contribution factor. I would like to um, have the billing and collections agent review the report for that contribution factor. And I am unfortunately not seeing Heather on the call. Is Heather on the call by chance? Yes, I am. Oh, okay. Excellent. Hey, so, Phil, so yes. we, we have the um, updated statement of work and, and oh, uh, I'm billing sorry agent requirement well, first i am i am totally jumping ahead of things i apologize <laughs> that's okay i'm following a different agenda for some reason i apologize so the let's agenda move into the into yeah. the billing and collections agent requirements my apologies so if we move to no the problem. next slide and apologize heather so the billing and collections agent requirements so the nancy received a charge letter from the FCC on March 25th, and this was in anticipation of the contract expiration of the BNC agents um, contract on April 30th of 2023. Uh, the charge letter directed the Nancy to, to review the statement of work, which is the kind of the foundation of the requirements for the billing and collections agent. And then we were to uh, submit those uh, the the Nancy is to submit those by June 17th, uh, 2022, in a few days here. The NO, NAOWG met seven in seven working sessions between April 4th through May 23rd, uh, each around about an hour and a half, um, and just to review and identify uh, some places where this could where the requirements needed modification. So if we move to the next slide. So the NAOW recommend NAOWG recommends the Nancy approve the statement of work and and billing and collections and requirements document as submitted. Uh, the NAOWG bases its review on the billing and collections agents requirements document. Uh, they base the document on the existing oversight requirements. Uh, we incorporated input from the NAOWG uh, membership as well as incorporated FCC liaison and BNC mediated confirmation of federal contract requirements and the BNC agents current operations. The NAOWG has observed and, rec and recommends that additional updates may be beneficial prior to the initiation of a competitive procurement process. And what that really is saying is there may be some citations in there such as a site to a website or something like that that may need to be updated, that kind of thing. And those have been identified as some uh, non-substantive type items that could be updated. So 
Um, and the next slide, I think we move into a call for the votes. I'll turn it over to Chairwoman Charles Peterson to perform that vote. Thank you, Phil. Do members at this time have any questions about the updated statement of work and billing and collection agent requirements? Okay, hearing no discussion, um, I will now open the meeting for a vote to approve this report and recommendation. Would anyone like to make so a motion to approve? Okay, please tell me I your name, move. who moved it? Yeah, Bob Nelson Nasuka. Bob Nelson moved. Do I have a second? <clears throat> this is Rich Shockey with Sephorum, I'll second. Shockey from Sipforum. Second the motion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed. Great. Thank you. Motion uh, approved. And the Nancy approves this report and recommendation of the NAOWG. Next, we'll hear an overview of the NAOWG report and recommendation on the North American numbering plan fund size projections and contribution factor, beginning with a report by the billing and collection agent. Welch LLP. Co-chair Phil Lind will present the recommendation on behalf of the NAOWG. Phil, I turn the meeting over to you. Thank you, Chairwoman Charles Peterson. Um, okay, so this is um, uh, where I <laughs> will turn this over to Heather. Thank you, Heather, for uh, being willing to review uh, the report. And so I will turn it over to you and you can let me know when you're completed and we'll move into the recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. I'm not sure if there's a next slide. Um, if you can go the first, can you provide, go another slide? One more, please. Oh, one more, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the, the words, the, documentation for that is just the written portion to this that supports the numbers, but I will just briefly go through the numbers to um, discuss what the the budget is for this year. We have the SOMOS contract for NAP and pooling administration of $6.9 million. This is as per the contract in, in existence. Towards those costs, Canada and the Caribbean countries do contribute towards the, those costs of $179,000. So the total amount to be covered by the U.S. carriers is $6.8 million. In addition to that, there's additional costs of carrier audits. These, this represents audits um, initiated by the FCC for the purpose of uh, the, excuse me, um, for the purpose of uh, under, that are required under uh, 52.15K and the FCC order 00-42. The cost for billing collection is, again, as per contract, which represents the fees towards us. Um, this number does not include the fee for R&D administration because this is that is outside the NEMP budgets. The cost for data, collect, data collection agent, which is USAC, this is the cost that we pay towards the administration of the Form 499A process. 53,000 is with regards to the annual operations audit. It's an independent audit done by Ernst & Young every year. In addition to that, there are $40,000 estimated for bank charges based on prior history, Again, $40,000 for bad debts um, for carriers who don't pay their, their annual fees. Again, that is based on prior history. From that, 
from those costs, reduce the amount that's required by the carriers to contribute by the amount of the interest income estimated to be at $12,000 and the late fees for not filing the form 499A on time of $80,000. Both those numbers, again, are based on history. So based on that, we have total projection of disbursements for the upcoming budget year of $7,462,986,000. In um, conference with the NAOWG, uh, it was decided to that there would be a $1 million contingency to cover unknown costs, which could be additional FCC um, directives, uh, additional amounts that could uh, arise from the recompete of the uh, billing and collection agent contract because the costs provided are only uh, up above of the $340,000 are based partly on existing contract and then the remaining six months was based on an estimate of the current contract. But again, we don't know with those extra six months what those additional costs might be. Um, from that, we deducted. So that comes up with a total cost of $8,462,986. From that, we reduce the amount to be provided by the carriers by the amount of the anticipated surplus at September 2022. And this is per the April 2022 NAOWG report, and that is $1,295,761. So there is a net contribution by the care, by the U.S. carriers that needs to be covered this year of 7,167, or sorry, $7,167,225. The contribution is a function of both the budget number of 7 million and the revenue base from the carriers. Um, again, this is end user revenues only, and the revenue base projected for this year is expected to be about $84 billion um, based on the preliminary form 499A information we have up to the date of late May. Um, Phil, do you want to, the, I'll let you speak to the contribution factor that we have there, uh, 0. 0.0004, or sorry, quadruple 0853. And I guess if there's any questions Thanks. about the costs that are included in the budget. Sure. Thank you, Heather. So um, if we can move into the, the recommendation, we'll cover that quadruple 0.0853 number. Um, so is the NAOWG's recommendation that the quadruple 0853 is the contribution factor. Um, what I've got here is just basically a summary, high level summary of the of the elements of what Heather just went through. Um, the balance to be funded is uh, about $7.4 million. Um, the net US carrier contribution requirement is 7.1 million. That is essentially due to a surplus um, of around 295,000, um, uh, excluding the uh, $1 million contingency. So with the $1 million contingency, we've got 7.1 million uh, to be funded by carrier contributions. And when you turn that into that contribution factor, as Heather uh, explained, that's the where the quadruple 0853 comes from. And then down, down at the bottom there, that gives you just kind of a snapshot of what the previous year was to give you kind of that idea of what that looks like. And then in the next slide, provides some interesting information as far as our historical contribution factor over time, um, including um, how those basically change from year to year. So, um, and I think after this slide, we have um, kind of the end of the NAOWG presentation. So for the uh, BNC agent performance review, the BNC agent uh, requirements document, as well as this contribution factor, uh, these are all of the uh, companies and their representatives uh, that have worked on putting all of this information together. This is all in addition to the monthly 
reporting requirements and review of all the monthly requirements for the NAMPA, BNC, and R&D, in addition to uh, the current charge that we have on individual member pooling that's ongoing as well. So we've got multiple uh, efforts going on in parallel. Uh, we're happy to get these items completed uh, so that we can focus on some of these other things that we've got going on so we appreciate all of the help that all the members have provided towards all of these objectives uh, appreciate all their work and their contribution uh, this is truly a, a a team effort um when it comes to completing all this effort and there's a lot of expertise across the industry that goes into that comes into play when when providing uh, uh this these objectives and completing these objectives so if we can move to the next slide and then just to wrap up uh, the NAOWG uh, portion of this before the, the vote on the, on the contribution factor, these are myself and uh, Bob McCausland's contact information and then the scheduled meeting for the remainder of 2022. And with that, I can turn this over to Chairwoman Charles Peterson for um, uh, the vote for the contribution factor. Thank you, Phil and Heather, for your leadership on this matter. Um, do any members have questions about these reports? Yeah, this is Britt Shockey with SIP Forum. Phil, uh, this is just a question for clarification. How actually is the revenue base defined uh, I'm assuming it's from the 499 data, but what actually does it represent? Is that voice service revenue across the industry or what? I just, I'm actually just quite curious. Yeah, Because those it is, numbers it is, are quite dramatic. Yeah, I mean, especially if you look at kind of the overall uh, numbers from um, revenue numbers from year to year, there's some significant changes over the last few yeah, years. That's an understatement. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but but I believe those are just voice um, um, end user revenues. Uh, I think uh, Heather, you had indicated uh, that that's where that came from, and they do come from the 499, the form 499A. Yes, it does come from the 499A. It is end user revenues. It's three very specific lines on the form 499A. Um, I can give them to you if you would like. If you. If you that, if you're curious. No, I mean, I just that that clarifies exactly, you know, if that was voice and user revenue, because again, your historical chart for some of us is actually quite dramatic, and yeah. you know, even the change from 2022 projections to 2023 is a remarkable number. Uh, so, I mean, I appreciate the clarification. Are there any other questions or comments? Hearing none, concluding our discussion on the matter, I will now open the meeting for a motion to approve the report and recommendation on the North American numbering plan fund size projections and contribution factor. This is Rich Shockey with SIP Forum. I make a motion to approve. Thank you, Mr. Shockey for moving the motion. Do we have a second? Bridget Alexander White, US Connect, I second. Bridget Alexander White, thank you for making the second. You're welcome. We will now submit to the council for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any nays? Hearing none, the Nancy approves the report and recommendations. Again, thank you, Phil and Bob and Heather and all the members of the NAOWG for all of the work that went into to the presentation this afternoon. Now we will hear a report and recommendation from the Call Authentication Trust Anchor Working Group on the recommendation on steps to encourage adoption 
of caller ID authentication technology and other techniques to combat robocalls by policymakers and providers in countries outside of the United States. The co-chairs of the working group are Jackie Walgamoth and Beth Shore Rose, whom I thank for their leadership. And I apologize if I did not pronounce your last name properly. I again apologize. Jackie will present the report on behalf of the working group. So I'll turn the meeting over to you, Jackie. Thank you, Chairwoman Charles Peterson. On behalf of the CATA Working Group, I'd like to thank the Bureau for providing the industry the opportunity to address and provide input on these important issues. I'll note, as mentioned earlier, this is the third charge given to the CATA Working Group from the original letter dated June 14th, 2021. So here we are, almost to the day, a year later, submitting our third and final report for the Nancy's consideration. Next slide. This particular charge, which I'll read directly from the charge letter, requested that the CATA Working Group recommend steps to encourage adoption of caller ID authentication technology and other techniques to combat robocalls by policymakers and providers in countries outside of the United States, especially when that adoption would benefit US consumers. The report was to address the following, to provide observations on progress made toward combating robocalls in other countries and affect and the effect this progress or lack thereof has on US consumers. Identify whether foreign voice service providers and or other countries have adopted caller ID authentication technologies, whether under the stir shaken framework or under different frameworks and provide observations about the level of deployment of caller ID authentication technology in other countries and how such deployment affects the ability of US providers to combat robocalls terminating to US consumers from overseas. To provide available detail about the successes or difficulties experienced with the various technologies developed and where relevant, identify whether there are barriers to the exchange of caller ID authentication information between different systems. And if there are such barriers, recommend how these barriers can be overcome. The report should then also still recommend specifics on how the stir shaken framework can be used by US voice service providers and intermediate providers. Illegal robots originating outside the US and received by US consumers. Recommend steps the STIGA and other members of the industry can take to encourage the adoption of caller ID authentication technology, including the stir shaken framework to other countries and recommend engagement with other countries should be helpful to encourage the adoption of caller ID authentication technology, including the stir shaken framework. And if such engagement is recommended, identify priority countries for engagement and suggest specific steps and or technical capabilities that would promote successful implementation. So as the CATA working group began to address the charge, we thought that it was necessary to clarify that the recommendations that we're providing in the report apply to three category categories of calls because the benefits only ring true if all calls are authenticated by the originating service provider. These calls originate outside the US, fall into one of the following three categories. They have a US number in the caller ID, or they have a non-US number in the caller ID, or they have a US number in the caller ID and are from US mobile customers roaming internationally. The CATA working group notes that progress has been made outside the US, particularly in Canada, where stir shaken has been broadly deployed. The government's authorities in Canada and the US are in discussions to address the cross-border stir shaken which is the first occurrence for call authentication between countries. Though this is a significant milestone, we do realize that there are technical issues that will need to be overcome. These technical issues could vary by country, and as a result, a critical step in the process will be end-to-end -end testing among the various service providers. As well as the technical issues that may differ by country, it's important to note that different countries 
could potentially implement different call authentication solutions, but they must be interoperable and properly enabled in the networks in order to be effective. In addition to Canada, which I discussed just on the previous slide, France has a requirement of an in-service date of July 24th, 2023 for caller ID authentication. And Ireland has a report due mid-year this year, and then a final report due at the beginning of 2023. Continuing on regarding the adoption of caller ID authentication technologies by foreign voice service providers, in its research, the Cata Working Group noted that each country has its own zone of trust, meaning that the calls authenticated in one country can't automatically be verified in another country. Um, again, as I noted earlier, Canada and US are in discussions already regarding the cross-border authentication. And once the French GA is established, then uh, potentially the three countries could have caller ID authentication among them. The report also discusses the non-jurisdictional approaches for expanding the zone of trust, but the foundational principles, um, which I'll talk about here on a future slide, would need to be fully supported. Regarding the successes and difficulties, today, Stir Shaken is the only approach to achieve widespread standards-based and multi-vendor deployment in live networks. We did note that the French MAN Working Group study supports this technology. As far as barriers, we acknowledge that there may be translational boundaries between carrier, or I'm sorry, between caller ID authentication technologies and the use of a standards-based technology such, such as stir shaken is the best approach to avoid those barriers. Another of the items that we were asked to provide a recommendation on was how the stir shaken framework can be used by US voice and intermediate providers to combat illegal robocalls originating outside the US. The CATA working group recommends that the STIGA once stir shaken or another call authentication technology is deployed internationally, begin working with those international peers on mutually accepted policies for authenticating international calls. The following items need to be considered as we move in this direction. Protocol interoperability, which will be selecting an identifier for the service provider. In the US, uh, today the OCN is used, but we realize that this isn't uh, universal. Uh, the trust anchor, uh, an update should be made after approval by the appropriate governance authorities to the add a standard to address the merging of certificate revocation lists. Authorization, the US, US STIGA must authorize a foreign trust anchor in the ecosystem. And then finally, the trust criteria, each GA as part of their governance policies should define how to maintain the integrity of the shaken ecosystem within its domain. Again, where the foundational principles come in, there needs to be a means to support these principles related to security, accountability, and inclusiveness. In an effort to encourage the adoption of caller ID authentication mechanisms outside the US, the STI GA could take the following steps could develop a webinar or a report to outline the available resources, could document the US coordination efforts with Canada so that they could be used as a template for other international counterparts. It would also be beneficial for the STIGA to define key considerations for implementation, such as interoperability and enforcement handoffs. And as alluded earlier, another step for the STIGA would be to develop criteria under which the international trust anchored implement cross-border stir shaken. In addition to the activities the STIGA can do to promote the implementation of caller ID authentication mechanisms in other countries, the CATA Working Group also outlined several activities or items for the FCC to consider with their international counterparts. First, the FCC could encourage adoption of caller ID authentication technologies that incur incorporate I'm sorry, interoperate with stir shaken. Again, the governance structures should be established, taking into consideration uh, security, accountability, and inclusiveness. The FCC could promote cooperation among national authorities and global service providers. 
They could enter into MOUs with their international counterparts to share best practices and enforcement strategies. They could provide uh, education to foreign regulators on stir shaken and other mitigation tools um, and also consider using uh, the US export resources that are available. The FCC could encourage foreign regulators to mandate cooperation and traceback. And finally, uh, they could encourage foreign regulators to identify any regulatory roadblocks that would limit service providers from being willing to implement robocall mitigation tools and processes. And then continuing on the next page, we address the final items regarding the FCC engagement outside the US. Um, the CATA Working Group noted that based on statistical information from US Telecom, that India and Pakistan are the top two countries where the FCC could direct their efforts in order to address the highest number of illegal robocalls. And then finally, it was noted that the Commission could encourage implementation of common interoperable call authentication mechanisms and collaborate on enforcement to encourage the proper use of those mechanisms and expose when they are not properly being used. This concludes the CATA Working Group responses to the questions in the charge letter. Uh, the next slide that we're at provides the logistics. Um, here we have a list of the weekly meetings. I'd also like to note that there were several other meetings outside of this formal schedule where many different groups of individuals collaborated offline to be able to expedite our discussions during the meeting and focus more on the development of the report. And this slide lists the membership of the CATA Working Group. I'd like to acknowledge all of the members of the team and thank the entire working group for their written and oral contributions to the reports. And then finally, I'd also like to thank our FCC liaisons, Jonathan Lecter and Alex Hobbs, and the other FCC staff, and a special thanks to Beth Shorze for consistently running effective and efficient meetings so that we could meet the objectives and timelines of all three of the reports. And this concludes my report out. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. And thank you for pronouncing Beth's last name correctly, since I clearly botched it during the introduction. I, again, I apologize. So again, Jackie and Beth, thank you for your incredible leadership in these efforts. Um, to any of our members on the call this afternoon have any questions regarding the report? Uh, this is Rich Shockey with SIP Forum. Not any questions, but uh, an ancillary observation, which is uh, it is entirely clear that in terms of priority engagement, it is entirely probable that Australia may in fact uh, move fairly aggressively on call authentication technology. <coughs> I've actually had personal discussions with ACTRA about this. And the second target, by the way, is the United Kingdom, where I've had private conversations with Ofcom about this, but their priority in call authentication will not kick in until 2025 uh, until they can complete their transition to an all IP network. That's all I have. Thank you, Rick. Are there any questions, additional questions or comments or any comments related to uh, the comments that Rick just made, which I found very interesting. So thank you, Rick, for making them. So if the discussion portion is complete, I will now open the meeting for a vote to approve the CATA Working Group's report and recommendation. Would anyone like to make a motion to approve? Phil Lindsay with Lumen will make that motion. Phil Lindsay, thank you of Lumen. Glenn Klepper of Charter will second. Glenn Klepper of Charter, thank you for seconding the motion. And with that second, we'll submit it to the council for a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 aye.
Are there any nays? Hearing none, the Nancy approves the report and recommendation to the Call Authentication Trust Anchor Working Group. Thank you every, everyone for your participation there. We will now move on to the public participation. As I noted earlier, we enable public participation through comments filed in the docket and through a dedicated email address, livequestions at FCC.gov. First, we'll turn to the comments filed in the docket. A public notice for this meeting released on April 29th, 2022, asked members of the public to file any comments in the Commission's electronic comment filing system in docket number CC 92-237. Do we have any comments from members of the public? We don't have any questions submitted in the docket. Thank you very much, Christy. Are there any public comments or questions received through the livequestions.gov email address? No, we don't have any questions from the live questions mailbox. Again, thank you, Christy. And lastly, do any Nancy members have any other business they would like to address? Hearing none. I'd like to just remind folks that the next Nancy meeting will be at 2 p.m. Eastern time on August 15th, 2022, and will be an all virtual format again. Please mark your calendars as we get closer to the date. The agenda, presentation slides, and login information will be distributed. Christy, anything from the commission you'd like to add? Uh, yes, we have one thing. Uh, we've recently received a number of questions about alternates and backups for members uh, when they're unable to attend the, either the council or the working group meetings. Participants in these meetings must be vetted and appointed, so we encourage all members to nominate alternates for the council and also for any working group seats that they hold. If you do not already have an alternate and you're interested in nominating one, please reach out to the Nancy staff and we'll help you with the process for that. That's it for us, thanks. Christy, I have a question. Um, yeah. Is there a certain number or a max number of alternates a, a, a person can have? Um, so it would be one primary member and one alternate for the full council and, and then for each of the working groups. And they do not have to be the same people. Okay, but they can't have two, three, or four alternates. No, at this time we only allow one. Okay, thank you. Again, thank you, Christy. Vice Chair Alexander White, anything you'd like to conclude with? No, thank you very much. It's very chop full meeting and I'm I was very proud to be a part of those working groups and that's it. Thank you very much for checking. Absolutely. Bridget, it was such an honor and such a pleasure to have you with us this afternoon. If there is nothing else, I thank you all for your time. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you everyone. Thank you.